In this video, I'll be detailing my journey from college to medical school and share some tips and advice from things I learned along the way that will hopefully help you get into medical school as well. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. And the journey to medical school can be quite confusing, especially if you're a first generation doctor like me. Sometimes it almost feels like it's an impossible task, but if I manage to do it, I believe you can as well. I'll be covering everything from my pre-med course to the individual experiences of the three medical schools I applied to. So make sure to watch all the way to the end so you get to hear all my advice. So for my pre-medical degree, I took BS Psychology at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. And the reason I chose Psychology is that it offered me a lot of flexibility in terms of career options. If ever I decided not to pursue medicine anymore, I could easily switch to law, go academe, or even go corporate. And at the same time, the curriculum also allowed me to balance both the social sciences and the hard sciences which gave me enough units to study for the subjects relevant to the NMAT. So does that mean that psych is the best pre-med? Absolutely not. It was the best pre-med for me, but that doesn't mean it'll be the best pre-med for you. When it comes to choosing your pre-medical degree, what matters is that you choose something that interests you, because college is a time for you to learn and explore. So now onto the topic of grades. As much as we like to think that grades don't define us, they will though define you to the admissions committee of the medical school you're applying to. So therefore, you should take your study seriously while you're in college. But beyond just the grades, the study habits you have in college will be the foundation upon which you build upon while you're in med school. During my college days, I took my studies very seriously and it resulted in my graduating cum laude. However, I wasn't some nerd who spent all day studying in the library. I still partied, I still went out with my friends, but the only difference was I made sure that I finished all my studies before doing all of that. My motto then was, is if you want to play hard, you gotta work hard as well. And this work ethic also carried over into med school. And if your grades aren't where you want them to be, you still have another chance to boost your application. And this is through the NMAT. When it comes to the NMAT, the exam is almost like a double-edged sword. If you didn't really perform that well academically when you were in college, this exam can serve as a means to bolster your application. So if you get like a 99, 99 plus, it's gonna look really good in the eyes of the admissions committee. However, if you already have a high academic standing like magna cum laude, summa cum laude, cum laude, if you get a low percentile graph, that could actually harm your application because they'll start to question, how did you perform so well in college but you didn't perform well for this standardized exam? So the NMAT is something regardless of your academic standing, you should take very seriously because it's an important part of your application. As for extracurriculars, they're not as important for applying to medical schools here in the Philippines as compared to the US, but I recommend you join at least one organization during your time in college so that you can develop the skills that you won't necessarily be taught in the classroom. It's because of my joining of orgs in college that I was able to develop leadership skills, graphic design skills, and meeting several like-minded people who've helped me grow as a person along the way. So I applied to a total of three medical schools, the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery, the UP College of Medicine, and the Atadea School of Medicine and Public Health. The reasons I applied to these institutions were firstly, they're all top-notch institutions with strong track records in the boards, and the second reason being I was only allowed to apply to three medical schools by my parents. So if I was allowed to apply to as many medical schools as I wanted, I would have included the fourth med school, which would have been UERM, which is also a very prestigious medical school. Out of all the medical schools I applied to, USDs was probably the most streamlined, because all I had to do was just to fill up the application form and submit all the requirements to USD. I didn't have to take an interview, I didn't have to take any special exams, nothing. Very forward, straight to the point, get it and go. Probably one very unique thing about the USD application process is that they require you to submit two letters of good moral character to the school along with all your other applications. When I went to submit my application requirements or USD, I submitted it to the Tanyan Key building which is behind the main administrative building on campus. And I was really amazed by the architecture of their main administrative building because the old Spanish architecture really stands out from the modern building surrounding it. And it's really nice seeing this piece of history in this modern campus. For the ASMPH application, I really like that it was also online because it made it a lot easier to submit requirements. And probably the most unique thing about the ASMPH application is that they require you to submit an essay. During my time, they provided us an essay prompt, but I'm not sure if this will be true for all succeeding application cycles. So some general advice I can give for the ASMPH essay is to use it as a means to show why you want to become a doctor and how ASMPH can help you become that doctor. So for example, in my ASMPH essay, I detail on how I view doctors nowadays as almost like a Swiss army knife type of profession where you need to be able to wear multiple hats in order to satisfy specific needs. And I supported this statement by writing about my experience of working with startups and joining hackathons, seeing how people in the medical industry can cooperate with people from other industries to create bigger impacts within the healthcare industry. 
And I connected this with ASMPH's values of creating doctors who are outstanding clinicians, dynamic leaders, and social catalysts. So in the brief 500 word essay, I was able to connect why I want to become a doctor with ASMPH's values. And I think that really created a strong essay for my application. In addition to that, another unique thing about the ASMPH application process is the interview. Because I remember having to go to the campus on a school day for my interview session. And I don't know what is more nerve-wracking, the actual interview or finding a parking space. Because it's very hard to find parking if you're not a student on campus because all the slots in the area are reserved for students and faculty. So I had to find a parking slot in the business center nearby, and luckily I was able to do so. As for the interview proper, you stay in one of these small rooms in the school where you sit on one end of the room, and there's a panel of two to three doctors on the other side who will be asking you interview questions. During my interview, there were two doctors who interviewed me, and initially, I was intimidated by them. But because I had prepared so well for the interview in the days leading up to it, I was able to keep myself calm and do the interview well. And as a tip for any of you watching this video who'll be having their ASMPH interview soon, don't be so intimidated by them because at the end of the day, they're people too. And having met so many of the faculty from my past two years in ASMPH, a lot of them are some of the funniest down-to-earth people I know. And obviously, they're just putting up a facade of being really serious just for the purposes of the interview. When it comes to the most prestigious medical schools in the Philippines, I think USD and UPCM are by far the most prestigious of the bunch. However, I consider UPCM much harder to get into, mainly because there are lesser slots and you're competing against some of the best students from all around the Philippines. This level of competition would often deter some people, but I saw it as a challenge. And if I wanted to get into one of my dream medical schools, I needed to take that shot because you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Besides the level of competition, UPCM was also difficult to apply to because unlike USD and ASMPH, the entire application process was manual, meaning I had to go to the school just to get my application forms, come back just to submit, and come back a third time for my interview. And in addition to that, all UPCM applicants have to sign a return service agreement. And what this contract is, is that if you decide to enroll in the school, you're obligated to finish the entire five-year degree and provide two years of return service within the five years after you graduate. And if you violate this contract, there will be penalties that you'll have to pay. And this is all for the benefit of being able to study in a state school where your tuition is heavily subsidized. Comparing my ASMPH and UPCM interview experiences, they were quite similar in that I was interviewed by a panel of doctors each time. Probably the only difference in my experience was my preparation process to making sure that my answers for each school would be aligned to their values. After finishing my applications, I began waiting for the results to come out. USD came out first, as it usually is in the application cycle, and luckily, I got in. However, I wasn't completely satisfied with that because the two schools I really wanted to get into were ASMPH and UPCM. I was really stressed the week leading up to my ASMPH result coming out because it was also the week that the USD confirmation deadline was set. And I didn't really want to be put in the position where I'm back on getting into this one school and not reserving a slot that I was already in because if I ended up getting rejected from ASMPH and not reserving my slot, I'd be left with nothing and just be banking on and getting into UPCM, which I had no guarantee of getting into either. So you can imagine how stressful that was for me. And the day before the USD confirmation deadline, my ASMPH result comes out, and lo and behold, I got accepted. So at that point, I'm 2 for 2, and all that's left is UPCM to make it 3 for 3. To play it safe, I reserved my slot at ASMPH, so at the very least, I would already have a med school. But some of you may now be wondering why I decided not to go to USD instead. Well, the reason for that is that my values align more with ASMPH and UPCMs, mainly because I grew up going to a Jesuit school from nursery to high school, and my undergraduate degree was from UP, so naturally, those things align. Then finally, the UPCM results came out, and much to my dismay, I didn't see my name on the list of accepted applicants. Naturally, I was devastated because UPCM was a medical school I dreamed of getting into, even before I entered college, and seeing four years of hard work amount to failure was really crushing for me. It took some time for me to get over my rejection, but what finally made me accept it was the realization that the med school alone isn't what determines whether or not you become a good doctor. Rather, what's important is that you maximize the level of medical education you receive regardless of the medical school you're in. Because once you're a practicing physician, most of your patients won't even ask you which medical school you went to. What's important to them is whether or not you can help them, and at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. So I hope my story inspires you to continue pursuing that medical dream, whether or not you get into your dream med school. And if you want to learn my tips and advice on how to get into med school, check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.